morning, everyone. We're glad you're here. We welcome all of you online as well. We are thrilled that you've joined us today. I need your help. If you're on the chat, I'd like to uh, have you talk to the, uh, to the host and just say hello. I'm going to ask the people in the room, if you would, you need to stand and at least do a fist pump with somebody who you didn't come with. Right now, you know, you've got to do at least somebody you didn't come with. So that means you've got to get up, move around, and that will turn it over to you folks. So, all right. I didn't come with you, but I won't fist pump. You're good to go. <laughs> Good morning, Sue. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's try it again. Our God and firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground. The nations rise and fall. Kingdoms with strong now shaken, we trust forever in your name. The name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign. Every knee will bow. We bring our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever, Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. We are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. banner high we lift the name of Jesus from age to age you reign our kingdom has no end we lift our banner high we lift the name of Jesus from age to age you reign your kingdom has no end you are the only king forever Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. worship a great and mighty God and I was just thinking as we sang that song it'd be kind of cool to just if you get a little distracted you know count the, na the names of God as we go through the service this morning just 
and none of it could compare to his greatness. our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. And hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. I am Jim. It is great to see you, and apparently I'm feeding back a little bit. <laughs> well, welcome if you're online or here in person. We love to get to know each other, so before you get too comfortable in those seats or on the keyboard, uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to answer this question to someone who is not near you. If you're online, that means do it in the chat box, but if you're here in person, Please move out of your row at least to say hi to someone else wearing your mask. But this is the question I want you to find out about the other person. For you, what snack food is it hard to have just a little of? Chips? You know those Muddy Buddies? Muddy Buddies? Oh. 
that destroys. Okay, so you're a salty person. I'm very much a salty. Salty. So if someone put like a chocolate bar right in front of you, you could do. You could I be know, like. I, I would have some, but I, I like Dean can't stop. Whereas I, I'll okay. do things and I love like, like I'll take a bite and give him the whole rest of like a chuckle. You know what's been terrible for me what? is that um, the salty sweet mix they've been coming out with, like all the all bugles things. that have the caramel on it. Because like, those you can eat forever. Now that we know your weaknesses, Some things are tempting, like those snack foods that we just mentioned, those are super tempting. But it's not always just food, it, other instances that can be very tempting to us where we tend to lose control. Like, all right, if I'm honest, watching my sports teams um, can be a very tempting thing where I lose control. I can either be very excited or if my teams are losing for the rest of the day, I struggle with self-control because I want to snap at people. I'm angry, I'm frustrated. And, and then there's those other times that I'm super tired. You know, you probably stayed up way too late and you had to get up early and you, you find yourself doing things you normally would have said no to because you have no willpower left, you know? so. Those are hard places to keep my self-control, too. This month, we're talking about self-control in CC Kids, and it is super important. It can help us in so many areas of our life. This week in particular, we're talking about those opportunities where we find it hard to stay under control. We all have those triggers. We have those things that we know that if we do certain things, it's hard to use self-control. And so this week we're going to be learning about it because God wants us to live a life full of control because that's where we're best. That's where we have the most fun is when we're not shooting ourselves in the foot. So if you are online, we'd love to invite you to watch the videos later. They're linked right on our website. If you're here in person, we're going to meet right back there because we're going to play a little game on the way back. So you guys are excused. Thanks for having us and have a great morning.
great to be in the house of the Lord this morning and these songs that we've sung this morning remind us of the greatness of God and the opportunity we have to worship him. So I invite you to join me as we join our hearts together in prayer. Lord, we praise you for being a God who hears our prayers because you listen. You hear us crying out to you calling you the great and mighty one. We thank you for providing a way for us, for overseeing this world for us to keep us safe. Lord, we acknowledge you as the great and mighty God. Also, Lord, we confess our need for you, that we have uh, steered our way into the waves of trouble far too often. And Lord, we now ask that as we confess our failures, that you hear us and that you respond to us with your mercy and grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. We are so grateful for the way in which you remind us that you will bring us back every time we confess our need for you. Lord, be with those this day that need your touch. We ask that... uh, By the power of your spirit, you would heal, mend, and restore those who need your touch. For those who are facing a physical issue, perhaps uh, they they are uh, facing it alone. So, Lord, we pray that they would feel the community of the Holy Spirit at this moment as we pray. And Lord, for those who are uh, perhaps lost or mourning the loss of a loved one or are facing a challenge, we pray that you would provide them the peace that surpasses all understanding. And may your Holy Spirit just remind them of your love. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful to uh, be a able to worship today, and also we've got a few announcements for you as we, uh, we note that uh, there's uh, 
courses, classes coming up that are being offered at both hours. So if you're, uh, you'd like to get connected at 9, there's a class uh, in the library that meets. It's a hybrid model as well. And then today, I want you to be praying all week. With, so we start seven days of uh, Celtic Cross hosting our winter sanctuary. Our friends and neighbors will be here who need a place. Uh, and so they will be here each night. And we have teams of people that are uh, in place and ready to go. And I'm so grateful for them. And I, I want to, to make sure when you see Kay Quick and, and Jan Souza that you just thank them. Because they have been working months and months to put this together. And uh, sometimes it is just the thank you that you give them that provides some encouragement to them. Because they have worked so hard to make sure we have everything in place. So thank you for your generous support. And I can't imagine. Now, I can't tell you enough how grateful I am for all the extra food that you brought in for this as well. We have, uh, we've asked you each and every time <laughs> the last few months to respond, and you have overwhelmed us from the downtown ministry gifts uh, for kids uh, to uh, the food, uh, an overwhelming gift to our Christmas joy offering. You have been responding uh, in faith, and I want to thank you as a congregation for that. This morning, we are uh, transitioning our leadership, and so we have a slide for those who uh, are going to be ordained and installed, and I get the privilege of reading the questions today uh, for deacons and elders. We did a few at the first hour, and I noticed that uh, we have some folks that are needed to do it online. They're, they need to be, uh, so they're online as well, so this is a great opportunity. We have different ways that we can do things in these days. So if you're here today to be installed and, or ordained, I I want you to stand right where you are. You don't have to come up here. That's a great thing. You don't have to stand up. There's Patty and Debbie and Christy. We're glad you're here. And Doreen, thank you. Our, we have deacons and we have an elder. Christy is going to be our elder for kids ministry. So we're so glad for that. Thank you so much. So I have questions. You have to keep standing. I'm not making you stand in front of everybody because we're, uh, we're trying to be COVID friendly in these days. So, uh, and then Sherry's going to read a question for me in just a moment. Then there's a microphone over here for you. And you get the other X. Sorry, I get this X. <laughs> COVID tells us we can't share X's anymore on the slot so that our friends at home can see us. All right, I'm going to ask the questions, and, uh, but I have to have help. I don't do it alone anymore. Glasses are necessary. For th those uh, taking on the office of elder and deacon, do you trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God will you fulfill your office in the obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? And will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? For the elder, will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the government and discipline, serving in the governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Thank you, Christy. For our deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Great. You did wonderful. I have a question that will be up on the screen, and Sherry's going to read that for us, the congregation, and then we respond at the appropriate point with our unison we do. Okay. Do we, the members of the church, accept these elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. We do. 
Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? We do. Because we are in COVID days, we would normally have you come forward and we would lean on you with our hands and give you the prayer, but we're not leaning on you today. But I would ask all ordained elders, uh, deacons, whoever here, if you don't mind joining me in holding your hand out to give the imaginary, uh, we, we have imagination according to the uh, governing way we took our vows, we are going to pray for you. So let us, uh, let us pray for those deacons and elders that have taken their vows. Would you join me, please? Lord, I thank you for these elders and deacons who have taken on this calling to follow you, to serve you, to offer their love and their service unto you, Lord. I thank you for their commitment, and now I ask that you would bless them as we welcome them to this ministry. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And would you welcome them to this ministry? We thank you for your service. I I am delighted that you're willing to serve, and we're, we always welcome our new leaders as we get into the new year. It's a great transition, but also uh, the heritage of our church is we share leadership, and shared leadership means that we, uh, we listen to one another, and, and that enables us to be creative and responsive to the needs in our world, and don't we need that today? In fact, I decided to, uh, to move into this new series called Seeking God for a Breakthrough out of a response to some uh, prayers I was having and saying, how can we be more effective in prayer? And I ran across this prayer in Daniel as uh, we see it here. Uh, Daniel chapter 9 verse 3 says this, Then I turned my face to the Lord, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy. And then he goes on to share putting on sackcloth, uh, which is nothing more than burlap. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the most uncomfortable thing. It would have been what they made bags out of in those days. And they put those on as clothes to remind them how itchy and how uncomfortable it is. And then they ran outside uh, where they put the ash heaps and they would throw ashes on their heads saying, this, I, I am not worthy of you, Lord. You are great. Daniel is an example of God's prophet who had seen it all. Did you know at age 15, Daniel was taken away from Jerusalem and he was really a prisoner of war. They took the youngest and the brightest. We believe that over 200,000, think about that for a moment, 200,000 Hebrew people were taken by the Babylonians. I mean, this is, this is cultural upset. And, of course, they took the youngest, the brightest, the most educated, the, most, the, the ones who had the most potential to have effect and to serve the Babylonian people in Nineveh. I'm going to show you a map in a moment. I want, uh, of course, you always know that about me. I always like to show maps. But I want you to understand that there's a pilgrimage in Daniel. Here he is at 15 going away and wondering. You know, we, we do the stories of Daniel. We all know the stories of Daniel. If we've heard them, maybe you haven't heard them. You might remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, they got stuck in the furnace and Daniel was standing strong all the way through that with his friends. Even though they weren't so sure, he was very sure. And then here we have Daniel who was visited by the ark Angel Gabriel, not just once, but twice, several times, given a vision, a vision that gave him the opportunity to see things. As he sought the Lord in prayer, God used him. And what it does is Daniel uh, was able to discover the plans of God because he made his life a life of prayer. During the first year of, of his reign, uh, it actually was Xerxes was, the, was in power in those days. L learning from the reading of the word of God, God showed Daniel a way forward, a word. I wanted to show you this quick video. It's not long, but it gets you to think about what is the word for you in this new year? What is the word for you? For Daniel, it was to go to the word of God as he knew it. For him, it was to go to Jeremiah, who was a contemporary prophet of the day, who was stuck in Jerusalem. Daniel's in 
Nineveh, where he's in Babylonia, he's, that's where he is. He's miles and miles away. But he knows that Jeremiah, who was his predecessor and mentor, led him there. Watch this to get a word for the new year. What's my word? That's the thing people do, right? Ask God for a word for the year ahead. It gives you a goal, a plan for your heart, a way to walk when the world crumbles around you. Lord, this year I need a word to help me focus on the right things, the eternal things. This is my year of waking up to what matters. What has always mattered. I need a word as I walk out of the ashes and into the sunlight. A word of hope. That one word that I'll feel deep in my heart. I pray, Lord, you would give me a word. Your, Your word. word. The living and active word. The one that is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word that lights my path. My teacher. My truth. My shield. Because of your word, God. My word has promise and meaning. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of God stands forever. Forever. Thank you, God. That your word can be my word. All year long. Amen. Amen. The Word of God all year long. The Word of God all through life. The Word of God for Daniel at age 85. That's what we believe. At age 85, God spoke to him. The angel showed up. He probably was thinking, am I seeing this or am I experiencing this? What is going on? And what Daniel says, he learned from reading the Word. You can't pray unless you read the word. That's not really a prayer. You're just talking to God. You see, when you read the word, now you're learning about who God is and what God is about and the things that God is revealing to us. It, it, he, and he said he went to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was the one who prophesied that there would be this 70 years. That's that 15 to 85. Here's, that's what we believe, that, that he had been waiting, that the message would come back that Daniel would get to go back to see Jerusalem again to see the walls rebuilt waiting to discover the plans of God wandering with the others thousands you know it's like that maybe in this time time of crisis where we don't know how many people are feeling all of that. And yet we see Daniel staying faithful as he was led out from Jerusalem and taken to Babylon where he lived there, uh, modern day Iraq. You, you, you have to understand that the history of the people in this region has gone back and forth for not just a hundred years, almost a thousand years or a couple thousand years. And if you're like me, you're wondering, how does that ever get fixed? I don't have an answer. Sorry. I do know I have this. And this tells me that I need to trust. And Daniel modeled a faith that was prayerful. Let me show you. Scripture provides a model for prayer. In fact, Daniel, if you read chapter 9, I encourage you to go back. If you have nowhere else to start, I want you to go back to Daniel 9 today just because that's where we are. And here we see Scripture, all the different uh, ways that it can express uh, God's word to us and give us a message for today. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you go back for me? I, or I'm, I'm getting help and I'm... There we go. All right. First, the first H in the model that Jesus, or that Jesus, not Jesus, but Daniel influenced Jesus with, because the, I want to get to that in a moment. Daniel's prayer actually is very close to the prayer that we just prayed a few moments ago, the Lord's Prayer, right? That's the prayer that Jesus gave to his people. Here's Daniel's prayer. Oh, Lord, you are great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant. You keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. That's a powerful bunch of words. And Daniel was crystal clear. Daniel had risen through the ranks. He had risen all the way to cupbearer. Do you know how far that is to go up the line? 
Our understanding of how foreign governments worked in that day is they would confiscate people to be the most closest to them because they couldn't, the Babylonian leaders couldn't even trust their own people. They couldn't trust them because they were afraid they would get poisoned by their own people because some of their leader wanted to be involved. So they would take foreign people and then put them in places of position and say, you're very powerful. We're going to keep you right here. Daniel stayed faithful in the midst of all the stress and strain. A cupbearer would drink from the cup of the king before the king would drink. And if it was poison, of course, they would just keel over and they would just bring another guy in or gal, whatever the case may be, right? You know how it works. But Daniel was faithful. He never stopped praising God. You go back and read his stories. He, he, he's the famous one for read the writing on the wall. You've heard that one before, right? We've heard that one before. Daniel's the one who read the writing on the wall and was able to be faithful because God gave him the vision of what was actually on the wall, the message. But Daniel never lost sight of that. He honored God with praise. And I just wanted to remind you that there's some unhelpful ways that people read Scripture. First, we need to think about how when we read these prayers, we need to be inspired by them and follow them. But we can get into trouble, too. Some of you remember the magic eight balls that were popular some years ago. Maybe you remember them. Uh, you gave them to friends and neighbors, or you played the game, and you would shake the ball right, and then something new would you pass it around, the eight ball, and it would give you a message. Well, sometimes people do that with their Bible reading. They just bounce around. Uh, they shake it up and say, well, this is going to be magic. I'll just open the Bible, and here it is. Woo, here it is. I need to follow this pattern because this is what but God doesn't speak that way. It's not magic. We don't want to do that. We want to take time to think about what we're looking at. What was the context that came in? This isn't a magic. We don't, uh, you know, we don't want to look at it that way. We want, to, we want to grow in our faith. Another way people look at the Bible is they have a pinball uh, aspect. You know how pinball machines work. The ball bounces off every single thing. Well, so people will bounce off of other ideas that they've heard somewhere. And then that comes another idea to come up on this side and they come up with schemes. That's one of the reasons that Daniel and Revel the book of Revelation have so many people that have made comments on it. And those that studied the book of Revelation with me were a little bit disappointed that I didn't have all the answers. I don't. I don't pretend to think that I have all the answers to the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation. Why? Because God has hidden, hidden his message. We need to discover it by looking into it, researching it for ourselves. Some people get stuck on the numbers. Daniel has a lot of numbers. Uh, 70 years here. Is it figurative? Is it literal? The book of Revelation has lots of numbers. And we can get stuck on the numbers. We don't need to bounce around. We need to be strong with what we know and what we discover. The last way I'm going to say this unhelpful is the personal shopper approach, which basically is, let me shop around on the internet and see if I can find somebody who agrees with the way I think. You know what I mean. I, I'm going to buy from this person because, well, they teach this. And so I'm going to believe in this. And so I'm going to buy that one. Or I'm going to go over here. And by the time we're done, it's like you're mesmerized. I would just say there are some excellent Bible teachers. I am not the only one out there. There's many people teaching solid material. You need to discover it. Look for it. I would say if you're drawing on more than four or five, you're going to get confused. Take those and go with it. I love the study Bibles. My favorite study Bible is the Life Application Bible. Why? Because it gives life application. <laughs> Very simple. It gives life application. And somebody's taken the time to look at the Scripture, give you an idea of how you can apply it, and then you can think about it and process it and, and pray about it and say, my life is different. My life can be different. Uh, there's some other great ones out there. I mean, I, I like, uh, for me, I like the biblical archaeology Bible. That one's cool because that gives a, 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 a background. If you like all that background, some people are going, that's very confusing. I don't need that. Well, don't look at it. You don't need that. Go to a different way of doing it. And I would say if you're getting too much <laughs> options, you're going to get confused and it won't help you. So how do we read and study the Bible? What can we do? Well, first, 
We honor God. We see it again and again. Jesus did that. Hallowed be thy name. He prayed to the Father, right? And secondly, as Jesus said and taught us, Daniel did too. Humbly confess your sins. Notice the first word right there. We have sinned. Here's a leader, Daniel, standing up in front of people saying, we. How many leaders do you know who stand up and say, we, we, we're in this together. Not you need to do this. No, we need. We have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled. We've turned aside from your commandments and rules. We've walked away from you. So Daniel humbly confessed his sins and said, this is the way to approach this. We need to. Think about that. Even as we forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors, we need to do that. That's what that humbly part is all about. Thirdly, we need to think about how we can receive direction. Daniel received direction. I like what Martin Luther said about prayer. Pray and let God worry. You've heard me say the opposite to worry is prayer. Well, Luther said it before I ever said it. You know, it's a brilliant statement. But do we do it? (laughs) Well, sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. We get stuck somewhere along the line. So I would encourage you to think about if you want to receive direction. I used to tell people that this was a road map to your life. I think I confused a lot of people. I would ask for forgiveness from God if I confused anybody by saying there's a road map. You have a map section in the back. and I, I remember teenagers used going back to the back, look at the map, and going, I wonder where God is going to take me next. Well, no, that's not, that's not the purpose of that. We, no, no, no. We need to look at the Bible and say, oh, we can find a way, but we need to receive that direction by just looking at Daniel's life. Here he is, visited for the second time by Gabriel, the archangel. And as he was praying, Gabriel showed up on the scene, came swiftly to him in the the time of the evening sacrifice. Daniel stayed dedicated to what he knew to be true. He ate the right foods. Remember the story of Daniel? He ate the right foods. He did the right things. He offered the sacrifices in the right way. And then notice what he said. He explained to me. Gabriel, Daniel, I have come here to give you, notice the words, I put them in yellow for you, insight and understanding. Insight. How do you know what direction to go unless you're living a life of prayer? Insight comes from God, not from, not necessarily from outside sources, but from God himself and understanding. I have come to give you insight and understanding. I went back to look at the Hebrew. The Hebrew is a little tricky because sometimes the words don't translate as easily into our English words. And so when you look at these two words together, because they are two different words in the Hebrew, in the Masoretic text, it is very interesting. These words are a reminder of how God worked. He spoke through his prophets. He spoke through his faithful disciples, those who were willing to stand and deliver and go forward. And there's no doubt as we see Daniel in this passage in chapter 9 saying, I know Jeremiah. I know who he is, and I know he's sharing the love of God, and I know that he would have had this text, which is a famous text for us today, uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 and 12. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you. Not plans for your disaster. My plans will give you hope and a future. Here's the difference. When you're walking with God in prayer, you know you have hope and you know you have a future. And in those days, when you pray, I will listen. Who's listening here? God. God listens to our prayer. If we honor God with our worship and our praise in everything that we do, if we humbly confess our failures and the ways we've walked away, we trust in the hope and the future. And in those days when you pray, God said he will listen. Daniel trusted in that promise. 
that promise that the 70 years is over and that he would get to go back with his comrades to be in a place to rebuild Jerusalem to the strength that it was. So how does this add up? Daniel, in a place that I was looking this week, was the persistent prophet. That's really what it was. He was the persistent prophet. He never gave up. So be persistent. It's a great uh, story that I heard uh, from the Graham, the Billy Graham Association years ago. I went to a seminar on evangelism, a couple day seminar. Fantastic uh, message. It was many years ago, so it was contextually a different time. But yet the message was the same. And one of the leaders had come forward and said she had worked for uh, Billy Graham for years, but was so moved when he was, by the way in which he talked about this particular passage here. And I wanted to, to read it to you in the Amplified because she used that message in that day. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. She went on to tell the story of how she worked as Billy Graham's associate, and she was making arrangements for him to be at a radio station where he would be interviewed. And uh, the interviewer said, oh, that's great. We're glad to have uh, Dr. Graham come. We're thrilled that he's going to be here. We have some questions. We even have a special room for uh, him before so that he, ha he can be in prayer. And she was very kind. She goes, well, Dr. Graham has reminded me over and over again that he doesn't really need a special room because the places that he's at, he's always in prayer because he believes in this passage. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. It's the way he lives his life, she said. He chooses to live a life of unceasing prayer, that his life is a way of living. And he said, she went on, to, to talk to the person, and they, they were kind of embarrassed. We said, well, that's great. We've never had anyone say that before. <laughs> but I think that's an example of how prayer is really more of a lifestyle than just something we do at a worship service, or we stop and pause, or we do it at the beginning of the, our, our uh, offer grace <clears throat> before a meal or close a Bible study. Prayer is more than that. Prayer is personal, where we're walking and we're talking and we're rejoicing in our faith by being unceasing and persistent in every situation. Every situation. Be thankful. What's your word for the year as we think about that video? Is it to be persistent as Daniel was persistent? To not give up because there's all kinds of things and messaging going on. No. We choose in every situation to be unceasing and persistent. To be thankful. To be thankful. And notice what, he, what Paul says. And continually giving thanks. That means you never stop. <laughs> you live a life that's worthy of that message, which is we never give up. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word teaches us and reminds us to praise you for being a great and mighty God. Lord, I'm thankful for all of our, our worship music that reminds us to sing to you thankful songs, songs of, of reminders of how you have penetrated our hearts and our minds and our souls and changed us. And Lord, we're also so grateful that when we confess where we've gone wrong, when we share together in that effort, when it's not us pointing out all the wrongs of the world, but when we look at ourselves and say, no, I think change starts in me, that we allow your spirit to use us in an unceasing manner of just being persistent in prayer, being thankful, forgiving, and asking for forgiveness. Lord, use us this day to be a model, a model of faith that's worth living. And we ask that you do this in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance. I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe. As we enter back into the world, may we be persistent in all that we do. That is our word this day. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal love of God the Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit empower us in every way, now and forevermore. Amen.